This is Think Future with Calbucus. So many startup founders, if you ask me, get lost on a critical step when it comes to minimum viable product. Now, I've been the result of something like this myself. Back in 2009, I started a startup with a number of colleagues who I used to work with at Yahoo, and we started up a startup which was focused on targeted IP development. And unfortunately at the time, not a lot of companies were doing targeted IP development, so we decided to pivot. And what we did is we built a tool to help people find stuff on Twitter. Now, one of the things about Twitter, Twitter was super hot at the time, and a lot of people complained that something would just whip by on Twitter and they would miss it completely. So we built a tool that somebody would, you'd be able to put in a search term and the search term would look all over Twitter for the, it would go through the fire hose of tweets and find the most important tweets, the most important information on the particular topic. And then it would present those topics, it present that list a day later. So you'd enter the information in and then it would suck in all of that information. It would pull in all of this data and it would come back with a really nicely formatted report on that particular topic and how important it was or what important tweets happened on that particular topic. So you never had to worry about missing anything. Now, we built this thing, it took about six weeks. I was the only one of our colleagues who had had any recent software development experience. So I was the one who was tapped to do the work. So I built something that I thought was the minimum viable product, which was basically put in the search term, pull out the tweets, display the tweets, display, display the most important tweets. And of course, it wasn't good enough. Let's add this feature. Let's add this feature. Let's add this feature. We went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and added a bunch of features. And eventually one of our founders had to go back to work because their money was running out. And we launched the product. About two weeks, about one week into it, we decided there wasn't enough here. We had to take it down, even though we probably didn't give it enough time to determine whether or not there was any traction. So then we decided to go back, find other jobs, because we both our both of our money ran out and we weren't able to prove that this product worked. And, but every time we talked to somebody about the product, everybody was so excited about it. They said, wow, this is a great idea. I would totally use that if I would. In fact, I did that just a little while ago and they told me the same thing. I would totally love it if I could find some kind of tool that would help me to filter out what's important to me on social media. See, we made the mistake at each and every point in time, there were many points in time where we probably should have stopped and said, this is too much. In fact, my first launch of the product where I just did the minimum viable product where I went in and harvested those tweets and I presented them back to the users, that was probably too much. So every stage thereafter was too much, too much, too much. And we were worried about being embarrassed by the, by the MVP, that the MVP wasn't good enough for people to look at. They would look at it and they go, oh, this is a piece of crap. Why would I ever use anything like that? But the reality is that we should have started with an even earlier MVP. We should have started with a manual MVP, just a website, a plain website. We could have just thrown it up in, in five minutes saying, enter your search term and we will re return with the most important stuff off Twitter. Enter your search time, and then we could have manually, in the background, taken those 24 hours and done those searches and come up with a beautifully formatted report which provided that data. And then if we could have gotten people to pay for that data, then that would have been a proof point that that would have been something that we could have built. But we went ahead and built it thinking that should have been our MVP. No, our MVP should be the smallest executable step the very first thing we could have done to prove whether or not somebody was interested in using our service. We didn't have to write one single line of code to get to that proof point, but because we did write code to get to that proof point, and because we did have a certain set of expectations, the MVP just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It was not minimum at all at any point. So looking back on it now, I would have done it completely differently. If I had an idea that I wanted to test, I would absolutely throw up a website, test it by using manual processes on the back end, and then, only then, if it worked, then I would automate it. Then, if there was demand and people were willing to pay for it, then I would automate it. There's plenty of other examples of something like that happening, and that is absolutely the way to do it.
So we have to understand that an MVP really is the least you could possibly do to get your product out there and in front of people so people can see what it is, even if it doesn't really work.